Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today's the day, as Total War Warhammer 3 is finally out, and we can begin our campaign. So our first campaign is going to be Mel Ying of Grand Cafe, and we'll be playing this a little bit slow to take in the game and enjoy all the cinematics, and getting things started, we'll have the campaign background cinematic. This world has been sundered by a tide of arcane energy. The winds of magic churned into a maelstrom. The Tome of Fates drew me north to find out why. It guided me to a distant fortress steeped in blood. A battle was fought there. Though long over, the spirit still lingered. In the shadow of a broken portal, the trail ended. It was here the tome conversed with the dead. They told of Urson, the bear god of Kislev, lost in darkness. A noble prince ventured to save him, yet he strayed from the path and was corrupted by chaos. Savior became Executioner. A single shot, bound in faith forsaken, pierced Urson's heart. And so the bear god roared. The tide that broke the world. Spirits, where lies Urson now? Is he here? In the north. Beyond the maelstrom, in the realm of chaos, in the forge of souls. Is he alive? Wounded and dying, embraces its shadow. What shadow? A demon's? A master of the dark. <laughs> oh. I knew who shackled the bear. Bellacor. Only a fool would challenge Bellacor. And yet, the power of a dying god, there is no greater prize. A mere drop of Urson's blood would break my curse. Ending my servitude to this accursed book. Free to profit from its secrets. But Urson is locked in the Forge of Souls, deep in the realm of chaos. And I cannot enter this nightmarish domain. All routes have been sealed by the Maelstrom. There must be a way. Ah. <gasps> The tome unveils a spell to summon a portal, one to bypass the maelstrom and create a door into chaos. Knowledge to bargain, for I need an ally, one who is tempted by the power of the god bear and can withstand the horrors within. And for us, that's going to be Grand Cathay. So first, we'll just introduce quickly there are three shared mechanics for all Grand Cathay factions. Harmony, Compass, which is the Wuxing Compass, and the Ivory Road. And we'll be introducing them as we utilize them in our campaign. For our Let's Play here, we'll be playing as Mel Ying, the Storm Dragon, the ruler of the Northern Provinces. And taking a look at her faction effect, we have minus two corruption, very useful for countering all sorts of chaos portals that will pop up as we play the campaign. Essentially, there are seven types of corruption now in the game. There's Chaos Undivided, one for each of the four Chaos Gods, and there's still Skaven and Vampire uh, corruption as well. We are a human faction. We don't want any of that. So having any sort of anti-corruption mechanic is awesome for the entire faction. And for leadership boost, we get a 10% uh, bonus when fighting against Demons of Chaos, and we get a 20% ammunition boost for all missile unit. Now, if you have seen any of my previous Let's Plays for any Total War game, whether it's Troy or Three Kingdoms, 
you know that I'm particularly fond of range units, and this is definitely right up my alley, and we'll be enjoying that with a lot of range units in our armies. As for Lord Effect, this is for Mao Ying's uh, own army. She will have a 50% upkeep discount for all missile infantry units, so this is key here. We're speaking of the Peasant Archers, the Jade, the Warrior Crossbowmen, the Celestial Dragon Crossbowmen, and the Iron Hail Gunners, and Kray Gunners. I think Kray Gunners are, yeah, Kray Gunners are also infantry. So those are the units that will have 50% upkeep. Um, I'll try to utilize some of that, especially in the early game, but in the late game, we'll be kind of ignoring this one because I want to play with lots of Sky Junks. So that's probably going to be our main range unit in the late game for Malian's army, but this is a nice bonus to have early on. Any sort of, you know, discount we can have on upkeep will definitely help us out. And lastly, for the harmony mechanic, we have three points of in. So in and yang uh, is the Chinese Taoist symbol of Taizi, and in yang represents light and dark, uh, basically different relative opposites of each other. You can represent a lot of things, sun and moon, uh, you know, and so forth. For us, we have three points of in. Every single lord in the Grand Cathay army will have a value assigned of three points of either yang or in. And your goal to gain harmony is to balance everything. And not only do you have harmony on lords, there's harmony on heroes, which is one point. There's harmony on different buildings, which is one point. There are harmonies on technologies. It can be one or three points. And your job is to just have yourself in harmony at all times for massive bonuses, which we'll take a look at once we hop into game. This is the first thing we'll take care of. And if you're playing as Grand Cathay, this is the most important thing that you need to consider when playing the faction, because the bonuses are so good that if you don't really maintain it, you're losing out on just way too much for your campaign. We'll be playing, uh, well, we'll take a look at the map first. Well, the settings a little bit later. We are at the northernmost point of Grand Cafe, uh, northeasternmost point, uh, northwestern actually, um, northeastern point of the map, but northwestern point of Grand Cafe. This is the area. This is a polar map, so everything is pointing north this way. So technically, our east is this way, our west is this way, and this is south. And what's going on here is there's the Grand Bastion that runs across until it meets the river here. And we are tasked with defending it as the eldest daughter of the Dragon uh, Emperor. And we are in through the northwestern corner in a city called Nangao. And early on, we have to take care of some rebels and one of the gate has been breached and we must fix that. And then after that, my goal is to slowly take over the entirety of Grand Cafe, not by war, but by confederation. We'll get stronger, we'll protect the gate, we'll expand a little bit out towards the Chaos Wasteland and we'll try to be in a land grab with our brother, uh, who is the other playable legendary lord in Zhao Ming. He also has a lot of rebels. So basically there's a big rebel buffer zone between us, and if we're fast enough, we can take over some of his supposed starting territory by defeating his rebels before he can get to them. So that's kind of my goal early on. As for settings, we'll be taking uh, the setting here, 40 minute battle timer, uh, just because I prefer to have some sort of pressure in terms of having me fight siege battles a little bit faster rather than just sit back and have my range unit do the job and you have the choices here and everything else is fine we'll be playing on the hardest difficulty there are in the game very hard and legendary now very hard battle difficulty has been scaled down a little bit compared to past warhammer games it used to be 20 percent melee bonuses for the enemy i believe on very hard now it's just 10 percent but the leadership uh, difference still there. I think it's eight point bonus for the enemy and minus four for your own units in battle. So it's like a 12 point swing of leadership, which is actually pretty massive, but uh, we'll be dealing with that. And for campaign, of course, enemies will have massively uh, discounted upkeep costs, massively discounted uh, building costs. Everything will be cheap for them and they will spam out lots and lots of armies and they'll be targeting you because AI tunnel vision is still very much a thing, but we'll be fine. So Let's hop into game here. We'll take a look at the cinematic for why Grand Cafe might be interested in saving Urson, who is a Kislev god who's not related to us. And we'll read this as well, since this is our first campaign. Grand Cafe is the land of the Celestial Dragon Emperor. Before the world was blighted by chaos, the Celestial Dragon learned how to take human form. To aid his rule, he took a mate, the Moon Dragon, and they had nine children 
who became noble rulers of Cathay's many provinces. Of the nine, four have been lost to time and enmity. Miao Ying, the storm dragon, was the firstborn, given the honor of ruling the northern provinces and charged with Cathay's defense as the commander of the Great Bastion. But the predation of chaos grow, and the Bastion is under strain. The power of a god may aid in securing Cathay's borders. Perhaps there is an opportunity to lure the storm dragon into the chaos realms. I travel east to gain an audience, and this is spoken from the perspective of the visor, of course. Grand Cathay, a vast empire to the east, ruled by powerful creatures, dragons, who can inhabit human form. You are gravely mistaken. We have no interest in a mere god's power. No interest in power to use against the forces of chaos? I am Yao Yi, the Storm Dragon, older than the gods themselves. You are here for a greater purpose. This map shows the energy of all things. There should be harmony, but the world is unbalanced. My younger sister, Shen Tzu, bringer of light and hope. She ventured beyond the Norskan mountains, but was lost. Without her, without her light, darkness prevails, and our family has no comfort. Though I feel your loss, the Tome of Fates provides no insight to your sister's whereabouts. Ursa knows he witnessed her fate. Then why does he not tell you, Iron Dragon? There is mistrust between dragons and gods. If we save Ursa, he will tell us how to find Shen Tzu. Let me serve you, mighty dragons. I can reach Ursa lead you to him before it's too late, for one drop of his blood. Your destiny is to guide us. The armies of Cathay must breach the Maelstrom and march into chaos. Balance will be restored to the world when Shen Tzu is returned to you. Our goal is clear. To find the lost sister, we must hear the God Bear's testament before he passes into myth. I am the anointed guardian of the Great Bastion. Any breach brings great dishonor upon me. So prove your worth, mortal. Yes, great matriarch. There is indeed a rupture in the Great Bastion. The forces of Tzinch invade through the ruins of the Snake Gate and have taken the Terracotta Graveyard. Further along, the Bastion remains under threat from the Changer's forces, or as you know him, the dread power, Qian Qi. Yet, despite the enemy assaults, there remain brave defenders ever loyal to you. Bolster them, and they will gladly confederate with a revered dragon. You will need such allies, for it is on the other side of the wall where the threat is strongest. The eternal siege continues, for the dark powers are never sated. And there, the orchestrator of this woe, Kairos Fateweaver. Face this demonic oracle, lest he bring down the Bastion. Fateweaver is insidious, and the invasion is only part of his plan. Rebellion festers in Nanyang's minds under the Changer's malign influence. Punishment must be swift to reinforce your authority. Before we can hope to take the fight into the Chaos Realms themselves, 
We must bring harmony back to Grand Cathay. There is much to do. You must die for your betrayal. Alrighty, so we got our intro flyover. And as you can see, the gate is broken. The snake gate here is in ruins and we want to fix it. And they are the mechanics. We'll cover them as we use them. And our first mission is to engage and defeat the army in front of us, led by the rebel lords of Nanyang, controlled by Yuan Shan Tao, or Tao Yuan Shan here. We'll get a thousand added to our treasury, and we'll pick up a hero, which is an agent. In this case, Astromancers. Now, agents can work on the field and also can be embedded in your army and be used in battle. And the first thing we're going to do is talk about Harmony, because we've been talking about it quite a bit. I also kind of want to spin the map so that the north is north. Although, as we play around the map, we might have to spin it around to fix it constantly, but I think it still feels better that the wall is facing north here. And we're holding Nangal right here in the corner. As you can see, the Great Bastion runs along all the way along towards our capital, which we can't really see right now. It should be right here until it runs into this river, which is sort of the spirit. Uh, I think it's called the Spirit River, uh, because if an uh, invading army try to cross, they lose their souls, because apparently this is where the people of Grand Cathay, when they die past the underworld, that's where their soul go. So very safe border here with the big wall, plus this, you know, river of doom here. And right now, the snake gate is broken, and the forces of Zinch, or as Grand Cathay would call them, Jianqi, has invaded and taken control of the Terracotta Graveyard. We want to take this back. Uh, the only awkward thing about this is even if we take it, it would be just a piece of this province, Land of Stone and Steel. We can't hold the other two because it's currently held by Imperial Wardens until we can confederate them. We could also trade the territory to them, but I might be against that simply because uh, we don't want to strengthen them, right? If we want to confederate them, we want them to be weak. And aside from that, we also have our own problem. We hold the capital of the Gunpowder Road province, that's Nangao, and we don't have the Mai of Nanyang or Nandi. These two are currently being held by the rebel lords of Nanyang, so this is our first task, to take them down. And then we might be interested in moving on the Warpstone Desert which technically should be our brother's land because he's the Lord of Shangyang. That's his assigned territory, but he lost it, right? The descender lords of uh, Jinshen over here has taken it and they have three of the four and we can take it out before he reaches there. Now, Taizu looks very open because it's in ruins, but actually it's the Skavens, uh, the rat man, basically. Skavens, uh, the Urshan clan, uh, have a presence in Grand Cathay, and their settlements appear as a ruin. You can either just go attack them and find out, or you can use one of your agents to scout and uh, discover what's actually there. So the first thing we're going to do is fix our harmony, because we've been talking about it quite a bit. It's right here. It's this lotus icon on the top, and it needs to be balanced. Right now you can see it's shaded black, and this petal here is highlighted meaning our current in value is between one and three. As a matter of fact, it's currently three because we have Miao Ying, who's three points. Dragon. And that's gonna give us these following effects, right? 10 points of diplomatic relations, not bad. 20 points of growth, pretty good. Minus 5% for all the Yang building. It's always the complementary building because they're encouraging you to bring it back to harmony. And you also get more income from them and you lose income from in buildings. So infrastructure. The buildings that will give us income. So we can take a look at building types. Some settlements have special landmark. Some settlements have special resource. You can tell by the icon outside. So right here, if it has this little monument icon, it means there is a landmark building. If it has some sort of resource, in this case, this looks like a pottery and it is a pottery. We have a special resource building, which we can build, give us income and also use it in trade to increase the trade value. Aside from these special buildings, every single settlement will have military, basic and advanced, have some sort of defense building, and some sort of money-making infrastructure building. For us, you can see defense buildings and infrastructure buildings come in pairs. So for civic branch of the infrastructure, there is a young variant and an invariant. 
and they will do similar but slightly different things. And they're also mutually exclusive within one settlement. So for example, in Nagao here, if I built the tea parlor, I cannot build the labor conscription bureau, but I can flip between them by paying 60% of the original cost. So they can be converted, but they just can't coexist. However, they can coexist in the province. So for example, if I went with the invariant tea parlor here in Nangao, I can build the yang variant or the invariant in Nanyang. It's only per settlement, not per province. And of these, there are uh, pretty well-defined strategies in terms of optimal play. Uh, basically, industry is what's going to give you money. And if we compare the tier one here, uh, the spice market is infinitely better because we're getting more income boosted, 50 versus 75 base. Ignore the minus 5% because that's from the Harmony issue right now. And you also get a 2% trade income boost faction wide from the spice market. So there is no reason why you wouldn't want a spice market early on compared to a wares market. But once you get to tier 3, this flips. So we are at 225 with 6%. But over here, it's 300 flat. Now, you could argue, depending on your trade situation, maybe 6% can make up for that 75, especially since it's faction wide. But I actually highly doubt it. Trade income isn't that high in Warhammer. So it's actually better once you do get to tier 3, you can convert to Yang. But what about your Harmony? Well, it's the opposite effect here for the Civic building, which is mainly a growth building. Both will provide a decent chunk of growth. Uh, which is necessary for increasing your surplus population, which is consumed to level up your main settlement building. So growth is very useful early on, but once you max out your building, you no longer need surplus population and growth buildings become a little bit useless. So we got to look at the secondary effect. For the young variant, we start out with a construction cost discount, which is lovely. You know, early on when we're building everything, you want everything to be cheaper, save money where you can. But for the tea parlor, it's an income booster. So this is actually perfect because what you want is you want the young variant early for savings as you build up all your building. And once you come to the third tier, by that time, hopefully, most of your buildings are up and running and you have lots of income buildings spread across your entire province. And that's when you switch to the invariant and you get the 6% boost for all buildings in this province, keeping the growth the same. But since you don't have to build that many buildings anymore, and you can take advantage of all the buildings you did build and get more income. And this two flip here should be done together. Doing things in pair is very important for Grand Cathay because you want to keep that harmony every single turn. So it's nice if we can build, say, an in-building here for the spice market and build the labor conscription in the same turn and finish them at the same time. So we get one point in and one point young. And then by the time we get to tier three, we want to flip them and convert them at the same time as well. So you want to get into a habit of doing everything in pairs. Now, we didn't talk about the final building here. Conscription is mainly a control building. And on top of that, there is recruitment rank bonus on one option. And the other one is more of a casualty replenishment plus a recruitment cost discount. Technically, early on, you definitely enjoy the replenishment boost as well as the recruitment discount. It's pretty big, actually for peasant units. However, the building chain is very pricey, right? It's a thousand. And if you want to do a pair of income and growth related buildings, it makes sense to invest early on. And plus they will cancel each other out in terms of the in young value. If you add a third one here, it gets a little bit awkward because now you need to find somewhere else to balance this point. And I also recommend you to keep each settlement in young neutral because what if you lose that settlement, right? If you have a plus one here of Yang and you're using a plus one in here to cancel them out, but let's say you lose the mines of Nanyang, then not only do you lose the income, you lose your harmony, which messes up a ton of bonuses. So try your best to keep them pretty uh, self-sustained and neutral within each settlement. I think that's a pretty good tip to keep in mind. Now, how do we fix this? Well, we just need three points of young, and the best way to do that early on is to summon a Lord. So there are two types of Lord. There is the Lord Magistrate and the Dragon Blooded uh, Shugen Guns. Um, just I'm just going to call them Dragon Blooded. This word just doesn't mean anything in 
English or in Chinese. It's a made up word. Basically, they are related to the dragon lords. Dragon lords have cross mated with humans, and thus their children are dragon blooded. They cannot transform into a dragon, but they can do magic. They are quite pricey. As you can see, a thousand to summon one, 300 of upkeep, and by increasing the number of armies we have on the field, because each lord leads an army, we'll be increasing something called a supply line. And this is a penalty for your entire faction, where every single army's upkeep will be increased by 4% for each additional lord you recruit. This is 4% for legendary difficulty. If you're playing on different level of difficulty, this number will be lower. Uh, but this was just a small annoyance, but I think it's worth it to start out with one. I won't be using the Dragon Blooded. They're stronger and have more access to magic, but pricier. I want someone cheap, and the Lord Magistrate would do just fine. Just make sure you find someone with a young bonus. Everyone starts out with a special trait, giving you a little bit of bonus, defining their playstyle. This is actually perfect, the Fervent Questioner. We get a little bit of corruption. I don't need him to actually go out and do things. I just need him to manage the land for me and to balance out the yin yang mechanic. They will cost only, you know, 250 here. Now this value here is 4% of my current army on the field. I still have to do 4% of this and add that up as well. So recruiting him is going to add another 10 points, 260, 336. So we're going to lose about 336 here but we'll be getting a ton of bonuses. As you can see, when Harmony is in balance, look down below, we get diplomatic points of 20 with all Cathay factions. Every single building gets a 20% discount. That is massive. 40 points of growth, also massive. Every single Inyang building will give us 25% income. We'll get eight points of control, which will actually counteract uh, the legendary difficulty penalty of minus eight points of control in all settlements. And you also get minus five corruption in all, all provinces, all settlements. We have minus two by default as a faction. Now it's minus seven. And we get an army ability of Ancestral Warriors, which is a summoning ability. You can summon one stack of what's called Ancestral Warrior unit. It's basically an 80 unit, um, well, ultra unit size, of the Jade Halibut units, I think. I could be wrong, but we can see it in combat very, very soon. Uh, but we'll be recruiting him right here. I like the corruption. This is what we're looking for. And we'll just recruit him. I shall restore and we're going to do something else with him. We're going to rename him, Lord actually. Magistrate reporting. And we'll have a little fun with this. So we're going to call him... Zhuge Liang. Because I'm going to have him manage the north for me. And eventually maybe launch a few northern expeditions into the Chaos Waste. He can't move this turn, but I want him to come to the snake gate. It'll a take him two location. turns, a little bit unfortunate. Uh, but once he get here, we can colonize it. In Warhammer, like in Troy, if you bring a whole army, a whole stack, to colonize, everyone will suffer attrition. But if you just bring a single lord, it's just one man attrition. So it's a lot more efficient to have a single lord do this job and he actually get us into harmony we get all this bonus and once we get all these bonuses we can start doing things like diplomacy because we get more trending value and we're gonna use the quick deal we were looking for trade partners so anyone with this type of banner is a fellow cafe faction and we're going to be trading with them. We have a non-aggression with a Celestial Loyalist already. That's fine. You, you can see the trade value is actually quite low. Obviously, we don't have any, you know, resources yet. We haven't built the pottery building yet. Once we get that, that goes up a little, but it's not very high, right? We can add a military access to this. And they, although they do have balance offer, it's not very good, which I'm very annoyed by this. Like, why can't it just hit zero? Why do I have to come in here and OCD myself to find the exact optimum value. And I have to click that to find it. Okay, so yeah, it, it's gonna take us a little bit. I'm sorry, but uh, I, I can't stand the point too. It just drives me nuts. Like it's a convenient button. Like if you don't care about this extra 30, 40, you know, that you can squeeze out of your fellow, you know, Cathay faction, it's fine. But I, I, I just can't stand seeing it not being zero. So we'll be taking this deal. 
And we'll go back. We have another Imperial Warden. They should be getting beaten up quite a bit. And we probably could confederate them pretty soon. We'll add a non-aggression. And this probably will dip it down. Yes, this will. So we're not going to offer that to them right now. I want as much money as we can. And just why? Why can't it be zero? Like, it's better than before, where you didn't have this button. Like, at least I can ballpark it right off the bat, but still. Oh, please don't be 33. Please don't be 33. It's 33. All right, great. Harmony is it? All right, and that uh, seems to be all the trade yay. we can find. This is our brother. Now, this value will increase eventually. As you can see, we're trending up. We're only at 10. We got that 20 point boost. It'll slowly take up. There is no hidden mechanic to uh, give him one coin or one treasury at a time to boost this trending value like you can in Three Kingdom. We just have to wait. And once it's positive, we'll come back and sign it. Not and Lord, I think Sorry. that's all we can do right here. We're at war with both rebel factions, no problem. We're surprisingly... Oh, we're not capable of signing peace deal with the, the Zinch. That's what's going on. That's all the diplomacy we need to do here. We can go to battle. The super annoying thing about this battle here is the reward. We'll pick up an Astromancer. As I mentioned, that's a hero. Every hero has an Inyang point, so we will be off balance. Now, I know there is a way you can avoid this fight early on. Like, we don't have to fight them this turn. We can move on, and we can take a settlement next turn, and then use that settlement's buildings, or use whatever this building is, and try to get it balanced. Well, that is a foolproof plan if you know the Inyang value of the Astromancer you get. You don't know that. The Astromancer could be in or Yang. So there is a 50-50 chance you mess it up next turn, even if you avoid this this way. So I'd much rather just get it over with. We can end the first turn without Harmony, and we'll fix it from turn two and keep it going forward. The only thing that we're gonna lose out is building. So here's what you wanna do. You wanna gamble right here. You want to gamble that the Astromancer is going to be a young Astromancer. And this way, right now, everything's 20% cheaper. You're saving 100 here. I know, I'm a penny pincher. You're going to get used to it if you're first time on the channel. So this is going to be 400. I want to save it. If the Astromancer is in, we have to cancel it. And we have to build the Civic building instead for 500. Because at that point, the Harmony is broken because we got someone who is in. So fingers crossed. And uh, we'll start this fight here. There is probably something I could have done. Hmm, I wonder. So this is the the Ivory Road mechanic. This is the Silk Road uh, variant for the Warhammer universe called Ivory Road. And we have these caravan masters and they can take their own army onto the field to travel the Ivory Road, which is the Mountain of Moor, all the way towards Kislev, also down south. And they can carry certain set value of cargo that we give them. Once they arrive to their destination after X turns, it will be a multiple of that cargo value returned to us. Uh, and we also get a purple tier item for completing each location's first trade route. So each of these locations actually gonna give us a really good item, which is kind of CA's way of saying, I'm sorry, we didn't give you a quest battle because I don't know, I mean, I kind of understand why they didn't give Cathay a, a quest battle. It's because uh, Game Workshop doesn't have good lore for what weapons, you know, the Grand Cathay dragons use. The dragons don't really use a mount, don't really use a weapon. So they, they transform themselves into a dragon. Uh, so there's just like no story for like a certain epic item they can work towards. And therefore we ended up not getting one. Uh, we don't need this. I'll explain it. We have a caravan to start. Right, he's right here. We see exactly what he has. We can load him up. A thousand is the max right now, but we can level him up on his sort of unique skill tree and pick up different ways of maximizing our cargo. And we can pick destinations. So two things to consider, how long it is and how much we get paid, right? Six turns for about 3.4 times, seven turns for just three times. So this becomes a lot less attractive. You can see the, 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 the symbol of who owns it. If you own the path towards it, super safe, right? You end up basically not getting ambushed along the way. This is actually kind of tempting. 
three times for, you know, five turns. 4.4 for 10 turns. Eventually we have to do all of them, right? So that's fine, but... Okay, not too many options here. I like this. I like the five turns, 3k. We're done with this. And uh, we'll dispatch them. They will pop out in our capital, which is why I was kind of thinking maybe I should have done that first before diplomacy, because that's one extra stack on the field. Oh, uh, no, it didn't change the value. Does that not give us extra military strength? Apparently not. Okay, we didn't lose out anything. That's the good news. I guess maybe they consider the caravan as part of our military strength. We can also summon more caravans. We don't have to just have one. I can summon another one if I want. And you can see they come with different variety of bonuses, just like the traits. In this case, he's a rough rider. What do we have? Teddy Roosevelt over here. And uh, we end up with extra cavalry. So the retinue is going to be different. You can grow this army through events on the way where you have maybe four mercenaries who will join your army for pay and so forth. Now, do I want to pay 750 for another one? I don't actually like this army. I don't like the cavalry that much. Hmm. Weapon strength for peasant horsemen, jade lancer, and great loma riders, 25%. Not terrible. A Gong Sun as well. No wonder why he likes cavalry. I'm gonna hold off on this because I would have to pay 750 plus another thousand in terms of cargo to. I mean, I'm gonna max it out. And that's just a little bit too much money right now. I need to also think about my main army. All right, so no one there. But another neat trick with uh, Ivory Road is let's say our capital is about to get attacked. Summon a cargo because they will be standing here and someone sieging you, they will join the fight. You can't control them. They will just move by themselves. But if they get attacked, oh, basically they will reinforce and then you can basically get help, which is nice. All right, I think that settles it. We're fingers crossed to getting a young variant of the Astral Mancer as a reward. That's pretty much all we're hoping for. Let's go. Hao Yuanshan. Obviously, it's a super easy fight. We probably don't need to fight it, but I think we will. I think we'll fight a lot more fights than we usually will, uh, since this is our first Let's Play. So uh, if you don't like it, uh, we have... Well, I'm going to make timestamps for all these episodes here to try to let you cut out things you don't want to watch. And we're fighting this battle. There's still quite a bit to show. Like, um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of my viewers who come from Three Kingdoms and historical games and don't know how to play Warhammer. So uh, we can show things like magic. We can show things like how to summon that ancestral unit that we talked about, because we are still balanced up to this point. And we also have a very cool sky junk, a little first preview of a unit that I'm probably going to spam late game. I'm super fond of them. They're much better on smaller unit size. On Ultra, they're a lot weaker because they're a single entity, which means like even if we lower all the unit to small, you still get a full sky junk, which is awesome. Um, we can channel magic, basically shifting, basically gambling for more starting wins of magic. We're not really going to do it here. We don't need that much. We can just start deployment here. You can see if you have army abilities like the Ancestral Warrior, they'll always be on the right side. If you have abilities on your Lord, they'll be next to their wield. If you have spells, they'll be next to the winds of magic wheel right here. And this is hourglass. You get more winds as the you know battle commences. You have to spend this to cast spells, but abilities and army abilities are free. Uh, what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to take the high ground and we're going to chill because I want to summon this guy. We have this amazing Sky Junk who has 360 range and a lot of missile strength, and we're going to let them approach us. And another core mechanic of the Harmony also exists in battle, where you can see above them is this Yin Yang symbol. This means every single melee unit is Yang in battle, and every single range unit is in. And they're next to each other within, I think, 35 or 45, 45 meters? 45 meters, yes, in this circle. You get the bonus. 6 points, 12 points of leadership and melee defense for the melee units. And for the range unit, it's... Uh, where is it? There it is. 12 to 24 points of reload skill, which is really good. And also 6 to 12 points of leadership. Now, why is it a range? Because there are things called amplifiers. So... 
Skyjunk is an amplifier, but he cannot amplify himself. So if we look at the unit below him, you see that he's not 12 and 6. He's 14 and 7. He's getting 25% more. Your Legendary Lord is a 100% amplifier. So she has to be nearby to double everyone's bonus to the maximum. And that's what we're going to do. Um, the Horseman is interesting because I believe he has Vanguard deployment. And I believe he also has Hide. Yes. We'll keep him here. I want him to maybe chase out some of the routed units later on. And everyone else can just chill. We have two crossbow units or one crossbow, one archer. And everyone else just frontline for us. You're kind of useless. Um, puts you in the back. And we'll put Malian right in the middle. If she changes into a dragon, we will lose the amplifier effect. It's only good when she's in human form. You can see her spells, how much they cost, what they do, and then her abilities and what they do. We'll, we'll use them as we continue. Alright. So this is all the bonuses being affected. I'm telling you that you have the Eon bonus is being applied. They're going to be walking towards us because we have this artillery. AI is just not going to assist still. We're up against, I think, two range units? One, one range unit. Okay, so once this archer get routed, nothing can touch the sky junk, which is what I love about them. Because essentially, they're perfectly fine if the enemy doesn't have range in air. They can't land, obviously. They have a, a ability where it drops a bomb. Don't do it. You, you actually kill your own units. Three uses only. Pretty decent. You have a front mounted cannon, which will fire very soon. We'll see it. It's right here. And also four crane gunners rotated around. And you can actually spin your balloon around so that they reload separately, right? So you can have one or two people shoot, spin the other way, the other two will shoot. And by the time you spin back, the other two will be ready. The cool thing about that for Sky Drunk in particular is the ammo is only for the cannon. The crane gunners have infinite ammo. So even if you finish up shooting, you have basically, there we go, there we go, waiting for that. You have an infinite, you know, ammo sniper unit that can go out there and just spin on top of people. Just make sure you kill off all the enemy range beforehand, and that way they can then return fire on you. All right, that was max range for level one. It's not gonna be super accurate. Now I do think I can probably do a little bit of manual fire. All you have to do is hold down alt as you pull up the, the circle here. Celestial Fury. It just looks big because our reload time went down. I want to kill off this unit right here. I'm just going to target it. Alright, it's going to be hard for them to climb this up, right? Like, how are they going to climb up this terrace farm? Alright, we're going to get him close. And this is our summoning unit. It's been 45 seconds, and I'm going to actually just occupy them right here. Ancestors, answer me. And we literally summon unit on top of them. And uh, it's going to degrade over time. Their casualty is totally fine. You want them in your sort of crossbow range at this time. And you just want to, you know, harass them as much as you can. Want to kill them. I don't have a damaging spell. I think I have a heal spell and a hex early on. Yeah, we got nothing here. I don't want to change into dragon because I like the reload speed. And also, if we can remove the archer, they lose their Inyang bonus as well, which would be huge. This cliff is actually making it a little bit hard to fight them. Well, these are actually Celestial Dragon Guards. Well, that's actually really good. It's a great unit. No armor, though. These are ghostly units, but basically free setup for us. Why won't you route? They're starting to fire at us. It's okay, our front line all has shields. All the Grand Cathay units are really tanky. Well, why, are, why are we moving up? Oh, because the angle. Okay, fine. We'll prove our bombing capabilities. It's really slow. That's one big problem with the Sky Drunk. You can't have everything. 
We'll do a little bombing run. Congratulations, you climbed up, and here comes a bomb! Alright, we can shoot him point blank. Look at that. Alright, he's routed. He's gonna be routed. We cool down for that. Alright, we can start spinning now. Look at the guns. We hit him. We obey. It's the angle issue. It's okay. Cavalry. Yeah, want to pick up them. Stone and steel. I think we can just spin, Soldier just to keep hitting him. Bring oh, he's losing the bonuses. Great, great, great. Alright, we're gonna peel off. I don't want sustained one. fights. I just chase whoever's routing. He should be losing to army loss very soon. Yes. If not, we can try to hammer him with one of the. Fire rain rockets. We're, we're firing the shots pretty nicely. There we go. And he's routed. Alright, that's a fun fight here. Showing off all our little mechanics. And we did lose a couple men. I think the cavalry took some damage, and that might be it, actually. I mean, we lost health here, but... Um, wow, well, friendly fire, perhaps? They didn't kill anything. Did I kill my own cavalry? I don't think so. I think it's just on that charge. It, maybe I actually killed them. Hmm. Anyhow, uh, we picked up some money, we picked up some experience, no items. And we can kill captives for a little bit of leadership boost for the next five turns. We can get replenishment, no need here. And we can give up a little bit of replenishment for one turn to pick up a little bit of extra money. Yeah, I'm greedy. I'm taking that. We also didn't lose very much, you know, in terms of casualty replenishment. Please be young. Yes, it's young. Look at that. Beautiful. Wait, wait, wait. Is that our... Is that Drugodown or is it not? Hold on. Make sure we have the right person. I think it is. Yep. Nan Men. Oh, Nan. Nan Men Yutang. Oh, what a complicated name you have. So we did get a young lord. I don't have to cancel the building. We are not in harmony anymore. Sad but uh, we will automatically be in harmony next turn because we did get a young lord. Save now there is another mission. You can check all your missions here if you want or they're pinned right there. We got a new one, the hero comes. What we have to do with this one is we have to have him join our army, so embed him. And we're gonna take a look at heroes. So this is an Astromancer, one of the two hero class available to Grand Cafe on launch. There is an upkeep for them. They don't cause supply line, thank God. Uh, for Astromancers, they have a default embed ability called Scouting, which will increase our chance of finding magic item. These dots mean it can be leveled up on the skill tree for increased effect. And we'll just quickly do this with Celestial this army here, shall be mine. mainly to pick up this reward. And then we'll go back to him. If he stands on the field, then there is a control boost in your local uh, province. If he targets enemy settlement, you can steal research rate. It says negative 20 here. It's it's an increase of 20%. We haven't looked at tech tree yet, but this is not bad. Against enemy heroes, we can wound them. And against enemy armies, we can block them by reducing their movement. It's not the most useful list of abilities. I'm not particularly fond of Astromancers. I don't think they're very good on the field. Uh, they are decent in the army, so we can take a look at him. This is him in terms of what he looks like. Like lords, heroes can also pick up items. We didn't get any items from the last fight, but we can, and also ancillaries. And there's special traits. So for him, he's a gets one control. I mean, that's probably just from the act, the fact that he is an astral master. That's nothing special. And if we took a look at skills, here's where things get a little bit interesting. Grand Cafe have something called, or well, a lot of faction have something called Mastery of the Elemental Wind, which means if we have multiple units with this trait, in this case, I believe, the no, you also have it. So basically, if you're a magic user, you can boost everyone's magic power. So the spell's power increases. So we could run multiple Astromancers in the army to boost Mao Ying's ability to cast spells, for example. And that's probably what we're going to use him for. 
Um, you can give them different mounts with the Wuxing War Compass as an optional mount here that can boost magic a little bit more as well. Uh, basically, you can think of him as a spellcaster. The skill tree is actually super, you know, th there's nothing here. There's three lines. This line here is everything he can do on the field. Specialist increases percentage. This increases his effect for block army, increases his effect for wound hero, increases his effect for steel technology. I might do a little bit of this because uh, it does speed up a little bit. Although that might not always be a good thing because there is a harmony issue as well. There is red control. Uh, that's when you stand on the field, how much control you give and then scouting for when you're embedded uh, chance of dropping the item. You can see another 5%, another 10%, another 15%. Base is 10%, so maximum of 25% additional chance of picking up a magic item after battle. This is where he is good, right? So we have spells. We have an augment spell to boost uh, another unit with extra armor, melee defense, melee attack. We have a hex in an area debuffing enemies. We have wind blasts, which is... I think this is tier shape. Yeah, it's a cone, tier or cone shaped spell, wind, a uh, lore of heaven here, damaging enemy units. We have another hex debuffing enemies. We have a thunderbolt, a bombardment on the ground, small area, evasion for himself, and then a comet, another sort of bombardment spell, a vortex, which is a big circle on the ground, and then earthing for miscast if you want to do overcast. I'm not a huge fan of overcast, so I might not pick this up. I'll explain magic once we do get this far. And then we can also increase the power recharge rate of Winds of Magic to make sure we can do more spells. And then this is like what mount you have, what type of resistances you have, and not getting killed, right? Most agents in Total War game have some sort of immortality. It means if they get targeted, they end up wounded, they come back in five turns rather than just losing the character for good. It's a decent point to take. And because there's so few skills, and the max level is now 50, I actually think we can probably pick up everything, right? You don't need two mounts, so it's like one here, just four points, and then over here is like two, three, six, nine, 12, 13, 16, 16, 20, 21. Yeah, we can take up everything. There's 49 points to use. There's six here, six times three, six, uh, 18, 18 plus like 20 something. We have extra points. I don't know who designed this. Hmm. Like, it feels like we're missing things, right? Because, like, look at everyone else. Magistrate. Why, why do we have so little? Maybe there's a maybe there's a transformation? Like, the Heralds? We'll find out. If not, we just basically will max out. And that's fine, too. All right, so we'll use him here. Ready to there defend. is no point to... I can use him to go steal tech for 20%. But the problem is, right now, everything's four turns. The first three tech we can pick up. And if you divide four by 1.2, it's still three point something, right? 3.6 and then it's another three. So it's like 3.3. If it's not less than three or equal to three, it's still gonna be four turns because you can't finish fractional, like it's just the, the math doesn't carry over. It's not a 4X game where extra research rate, it'll be passed on to your next tech, no. So basically if it's 3.01, it's still four turns. So there's no point to steal right now. Uh, we can pick up any of these. Now, notice the structure here. We have three sections of technology. There is a central line. The technology on the central line have no symbols on them. No yin, no yang. And they're neutral. Every tech on the top half is a yang tech, usually one point. There is four sets that are three points. Every tech on the bottom are yin tech. And uh, you have three, uh, the corresponding four. They're always paired. That are three points as well. What you want to do here is if you don't have any clue the direction of your harmony going forward, just start with the middle, right? 10 armor for peasant long spearmen. If you don't really need this, like you don't have peasant long spearmen. Like for example, right now we have one and I'm not recruiting more. So this is kind of useless for me. The next one's kind of good, but also don't really need it. That I might consider say, I do have peasant archers. I want to recruit more peasant archers. I want fletching mentor. When there's one turn left, take a look at your buildings. If you can't complement this building or complement this tech, then don't finish it. Go somewhere else. It's really good to have, let's say like if I move on and there's dragon skills, and I know I don't need dragon skills, but if I could save in or yang tech, that's one turn, 
and just keep them at one turn and then just move on to something else, it's super useful later on when you're trying to build a building and you're just missing a piece. Just come back to your tech tree and finish some of your old tech that's branched away so that you can remain in harmony. Like right now, I, I do want this. So I'm going to work towards it and hopefully I can find a building that matches well with it. And in the case where like in the game, you don't have any means of finding a pair, then at least if you have both the in and a yang at one turn, you only be disharmonized for those two turns. Like you can quickly balance yourself back if they're both one, right? Versus having a f finish this one and be like, oh, I need another tech from the young and that's four turns. I'm gonna be, you know, in a bad situation for four turns. Well, not bad, but not good, right? We want the good. We wanna have all these bonuses for the majority of our gameplay. So that's kind of our goal. Superior. All right, so that's all explained. We got the tech pick, we used our ivy road. We cannot use Wusen Compass yet. This starts on turn four. So we're gonna wait and explain that when that happens. As for now, I'm gonna destroy this building because we don't need it. Um, the military building, it's not bad. We do get Iron Hell Gunners and we could focus on Iron Hell Gunners. I don't particularly like them that much. Um, they have great damage, armor piercing as well, but I'm gonna be spamming cheap peasant archers early on. We get those kind of for free in terms of training our settlement and we'll demolish that uh, right off the bat. And we'll use that slot for the resource building or for any on combination, depending on what we get in our next settlement. And from all these military buildings, I think the training camp is pretty useful, but we don't have to build it in a major settlement if we don't want to, because it's tier three. And the main settlement goes up to five tiers, but the minor ones only go up to three. So we can't build any of the advanced military, at least the high tier ones in the uh, minor ones. So we gotta save that for the main one. So for example, I really want sky junk, right? So I'm going to need to build this Alchemist Tower and also need to level up our settlement all the way to level five so we can pick up this building here, the Morning Tower, the Morning Tower to pick up the Sky Junk so we can recruit them. We also pick up Alchemist here. We can pick up more Astromancer here. These are our two hero type. Now the Alchemist I like a bit more because you get mobility or can play movement range when they're embedded. You can assassinate enemy heroes so you can remove the enemy heroes from the basic campaign and you can damage building. That one's not so big. You boost income when you're standing around. I like that as well. Um, but uh, essentially, if we're going to end up going this way, we can use this to increase our capacity for alchemists and recruit a couple alchemists. This is for the Terracotta Sentinel. I need this as well. So pretty much both of this building chain will be in Nangao here. This will be our main recruitment site, I believe, at least in the early game. That's going to take up two slots in the late game. So these are both tier five. We're not going to start them until we get close to tier five. So they're probably the final two slots. We're going to get, I think, two more slots when we do level up three. We get three. Oh, no, total of three. Plus two, right? Plus three, plus five, plus seven. Yeah. So we we'll only get this one when we level up next time once we get the surplus population, which will happen in a while, actually. Three turn for the next one and then a couple more. Okay, so it's gonna be resource plus probably a pair. We're probably not gonna have any military early on. Like, I'm only interested in the Jade Warrior cross movement and the Jade Warriors, essentially. Not with shield. So basic Jade Warrior, the anti-large Jade Warrior, and the crossbowman. I think shield's a little bit overrated. Yeah, I prefer the cheaper option. But that might be something we build in one of the minor settlements, and then we'll go from there. Not sure about cavalry yet. We're more of a range faction, so I think we'll probably focus here. We also have a landmark, the Ninth Wall. That's a very powerful defensive building. Also gives 30% extra ammo for all units during siege defense battles. It's just pretty beautiful, actually. For all sort of defending battles, this is very good. Eventually we'll get there, but we need quite a long time. All right, so that's good. Diplomacy, I think we checked. I don't think there's any change. Yep. So that's all solid goals. Ah, recruitment. We do want to fight the mines in Nango, uh, Nanyang. We'll just go here. We're going to add two of these units here. That's an archer. They're efficient for us. They're cheap. 50% less upkeep as a ranged infantry and also more ammo. I think that's it. I think we're good to go. I could probably get another... Looking at our money situation. We'll go with the Gong Sun Feng. Yeah, we'll get cavalry. Let's spice up our game. 
Oh, I cannot dispatch him. Oh, this is a limitation. Hmm, interesting. Wonder how how we can increase this. Oh well, it's fine. I don't mind him. Uh, we'll deploy him when he finished, because it's five turn there. On the five turn he's returning, I can send someone else out. That's more efficient, I think. Recruit two new units. We did that. Harmony back in balance. Very, very key. We just want to stay there. Capture and occupy the mine of Nanyang. Pick up an item which will grant us a fireball spell. Four uses in battle. Should be helpful. All right, Trugo down needs to move. We fix the gate. Now, why do we need to fix the gate right away, right? We didn't talk about the great bastion mechanic. It's right here next to the harmony. There is a threat level that grows every turn. It's defaulted to 8% constantly. And if you have any gate that's in ruin, you get plus four. So we want to fix it quickly so that it's going to be 34% next turn, and then that means there's 66% left. If it's 8% every turn, we're going to be, you know, uh, getting an invasion in 9 turns after that. So basically, I think turn 12-ish. And we need that time to build up this gate. We're slowing it down by quite a bit, if you think about it, right? It's either 6 turns or 9 turns away after we fix it, depending on if we go for this, this fast or not. So we're Did definitely coming here to fix it. I'm not going to take care of this anytime soon. There's no rush, I think. I think we much rather go for the land grab. Ah, look at our caravan go. Chosen by it's moving. Once he gets onto the path of the trade route, that's when we could get ambushed. If he's just traveling from our capital to the starting point, which is the Tower of Ashar here, uh, nothing bad will happen to him. Nothing good either. Alright, we can take this, I think. I, I think we can handle it. Anything else we need to do before that? We got an empty slot. I'm definitely going to be upgrading this. It's not going to change the value. The entire chain's just one point. The majestic Depending on what's here, right? That's a military building, so there's no point value here. We're going to fight our first siege battle. There's no walls, but they can definitely use their supplies to build towers. It'd be a little bit annoying. Um, I don't want this casualty number. We're going to try to use... I don't know whose health we're going to sacrifice here. There's a few units that I might delete because they're pricey. But um, we'll see. We'll see how I decide once we get into battle here. There's a healthy amount of units, right? They're led by Astromancer. And we're looking at uh, three Jade Warriors. The rest are peasants. We should be okay. Let's go. And despite being a small settlement, the maps are pretty interesting, actually. Definitely doesn't feel minor once you load into it. And these points you see are capture points. So if you build towers and you capture the point, all those towers are gone. I'm going to gamble here, see if we can get more or less. I'm just curious. We got more! Hooray! We got two points more. Okay. Start deployment. Uh, look at the map. That's the final victory point. These are different minor points, and he can put towers and barricades in these locations. We can't really see them right now, but he can construct them. And then the towers you can only take down uh, with range units because, or flying units, because they don't have sort of a ground area. They're kind of like built onto like a sort of bastion type of feel. Or you can just go straight for the point. If you land on the point, you stand there, and then once you capture it, everything that the point constructed, you can see the lines are telling you where they can build things, um, that will go down. So if you can build a barricade here, you can build a, that might be a, what is that actually? What is he, oh, that's gonna be a tower. That's a bastion. Right, so that's going to be a tower that this can build, and if we want to get rid of this tower, we have to go capture that point, which might make me can reconsider which angle I'm attacking from. Maybe this side. I think that's a tower, but at least we're closer to the point. 
There's also a little door here. We could just... Okay, I don't want to fight here because that's going to be annoying. Is there an entrance on this side or is it all walled up? Well, there's a little entrance here. That might be the best entrance right here. We go in. We can go fight our way up into the final point or we can just do, deal with this here. Yeah, I, I like this actually the best. All right, we're going to fight here. Hmm. Stone and steel. This is going to be useful. Order and balance. Wind and fire. Going to have them go tank it up. Thoughts in harmony. Ready to defend. My test begins. What is our spell right now? Ah, uh, it's just a boost. Okay. That's eh, not too bad. Dragon Guard! I actually don't know how they're gonna place their units. Fight as one. Fight as one. Wait, why why is it burning already? I didn't do anything. That's not a tower, that's just decoration. Alright, we're gonna move up. Go, 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 go. March for the Emperor. All right, so he built a barricade. I wonder if he's going to put a tower up here. Oh, there's a level one tower right here. Okay, so I'm going to try to take this on. It's going to hurt, but there's not a lot we can do about it right now with what we have. I'm just going to try to get a cheap unit to tank it. Ah, he's Move trying to construct this tower here, too. It's not finished yet, right? So if we could... Oh, did we take it out? No, we didn't. Oh, we're barely doing any damage to it. It's not worth it, then. The heavens guide me! Horseman! Shen Yang sends us! For the Emperor! Brace, brace. It's okay. Let the cavalry charge you. Jade warriors. Fire, fire, fire. Kinda wanna just dump them in here from behind them. We'll play not not use like we don't probably don't need to use it right now. We should probably use it once we get we wanna take that point to take out this tower. Right? I think that's the goal. If he wants to charge, we gotta be careful. Repositioning. Gotta get ourselves braced when we need to. Never conquered. Sent by dragon. All right, can we just stall them here? Thoughts in harmony. We can't hit it yet. It's not done constructing. Master of Azir, I will go. Order and balance. Never conquered. All right, let's see how much damage we can do to it. Point blank. Ah, uh, I don't think that's worth. Here. My power we need something that flies to take care of it. Loose. So, here's our first transformation. We can't attack it? Wait, seriously? No, we can't. We can't. We haven't finished the animation. I was like, we are flying. We can definitely attack it. Okay, we're gonna get our range units mounted over here. Bringing harmony. One. We can go bomb them as well. The that's a that's a good angle that I'm Wind okay with. Yeah, Melian kills towers pretty fast. We'll definitely do that. Go give boost. Court. All right, we're gonna dump this behind enemy line. Cavalry, occupy the cavalry. Can we kill the tower? Yes, we did. All right, can we go kill this tower as well? Do a couple things for us. A mm, little bit too many infantry here. Let's see if we can go take out some of these units here and then weaken that point. Alright, they're routed. Stone and steel. 
I'm trying to nuke them. Hold on. Get a better angle. We, we got this. We got this. I know my Astromancer's in trouble, but it's fine. Let's boost, um... Let's boost our cavalry, actually. And then give a charge. I'm gonna get all these guys to come over here. And we took out that tower as well. I wonder if we can capture by landing. Because we're not technically landing, right? We're technically transforming. So we are, like, not a flying unit. We're, we're human. I mean, it sounds a little broken, but perhaps it, it can work. All right, our unit degraded. It's fine. I'm gonna bomb those, and once they clean out this guy here, why don't we stop them from firing? Why is our cavalry stuck? Yeah, pathing in the city is still kind of a nightmare. See if we can actually capture this. Just curious. This will be absolutely broken. No, we're not capturing it. Okay, I mean that's fair. Rooting out evil. The storm gathered. Mm, but now we can't transform back, and we're kind of trapped behind here. They built. They built all these platforms. All right, can we break this one? Alright, let's keep bombing them. Alright, we, we won over here. Just very messy. Move information! Peasant horseman! Mm, no, we don't want to charge the bomb spears. Can we get them to fight this? Everyone else. Move forward. We have to take this out. Oh, there's another tower over there that's doing damage. It's annoying. Get into an angle here to fire at that. Warriors! Alright, I did send the right ones over. Let's keep a range unit nearby so that we can boost them. Boost. Why don't we why don't we turn around? Break it! Not bad. Alright, make sure they don't bounce back. Alright, we finally broke through. Can I fly now? No, 18 seconds. Did I break the door by any chance? Oh, we're surrounded by enemies. I can heal myself. It's not a big problem. I don't think I'm worried over here. I'm gonna cast the area heal just for myself. A little bit greedy, but it's fine. All right, Sky John, go help. Stone and steel. Marching as one. We don't have to do that. Just go over here. Immediately. Move as wind. The storm dragon. I have other business. Goodbye, guys. That tower got rebuilt, so uh. We're on tower duties again. Okay, we're gonna capture this pretty quickly. Wait, why? Oh, were, were we chasing a unit? Curious. Yes. Seeking Cathay's foes. And once we capture this, it should be all over. If yeah, there's something seriously wrong with pathing, you guys see this? It's balance. really annoying, especially Yang, during siege battles, because I'm. Oh, they built this back. Okay, it's not just pathing, it's just they built that back, which is super annoying. Um... Jade Warriors. Where did you come from? My big floating balloon. What can we do here for our boys? Okay, I can go help kill this guy. I don't want to fight those. We did capture this. Okay, we need to go capture that point as well, so we're gonna go over here. All right, that barricade's down. Can we move over here, guys? Heavens await. Certainly. 
Good positioning. All right, I got Boxing this. Harmonious rock, will of the dragons. Did we take we, we took it down, didn't we? Okay, good. Here, go harass those crossbowmen. Will of the dragons. Praise the dragons. They will perish. Yeah, we're here. We're here. My path is known. Attack! All right, pull, Shenyan pull, pull. You fight that. Pull back. I stand ready. I give them a boost. Dragon guard. The dragons are. All right. Ooh, their astromancer is using a spell. That's the wind spell. It's fine. It's not a lot of damage. We just get knocked down. It's okay. We got one bomb for them as well. Let us fly over them. Come on. Don't be shy. Alright. I think that's good. That's a big hole. Okay. Alright, they finally routed. Uh, it was messy, but uh, not too bad. The new siege mechanic does make siege battle a little bit more interesting to play, I guess, uh, especially with the closing of the pathing, which kind of messed us up for a little bit there. Alrighty, still no item. And we'll just be occupying it. We, mm, it's not worth it. The defensive parameter expands. We did get a follower. So this is by chance. This is the condition. As long as we are fighting against a Jade War, it doesn't happen every time, but there's always a chance when we're fighting against Jade War to pick up a Jade Sculptor, and this will increase the starting rank of all Jade Warrior and Jade Warrior Halber units in local province of whoever's equipped with this. Uh, it will go with. Um, I mean, there's no one else right now for us to use it. We also got the ring. This is actually useful. So now you picked up another spell we could use, technically. She, do she doesn't have to be the one, you know, holding it, but we're going to demolish that. And if we can pick up the, the army, we did level defender. up. No one's using the ring. Um, We might as well use it. We'll basically be able to use this fireball spell. It's a missile damage uh, four times in battle. 60 second cooldown. That's not bad. 300 range is actually pretty far. And I think early on, we'll just take the really utility approach here and get the 5% campaign movement range. Essentially, these are sort of your unique skills. And then this one is sort of a personal boost. These are spells. This is an army boost. And this is sort of the campaign utility boost. But the movement is always great. The Bastion's defense. Oh, do we get more than one level? The Storm Dragon. We did. Okay. In that case, I think we might pick up the improvement on uh, Earth Blood, which is the healing spell we used. This way, we could overcast the spell. There's a 30 second cooldown. But most importantly, I want to pick up Power of In and Life Bloom. So, what happens here is that whenever we cast, there will be an area debuff around Melying and a whole map heal for every single unit that we have. So Life Bloom is really good. Uh, I think that's what we want to pick up quite early on. So I think we'll start with Earth Blood into Life Bloom. We get that I chance. Was born to wield it. As for our Astromancer, hmm. This is questionable. We could improve this, the cooldown decrease here, and then start picking up useful spells like damaging spells like wind blast which we got hit with or we can go for a little bit of sneak technology i'm a little bit torn if we could get this steel technology to 133 percent which i know if you look at this is like maximum plus 10 which is correct so we go from 20 percent base to 30 percent base so we can get 130 percent but if we keep stealing there is the chance we pick up a trait and there's a trait that improves our stealing by 5%. The key about 133% is if we're above that and we actually get the steal technology, we actually lower the research down to three turns, which is 
tremendously helpful uh, going forward. So we might actually get to do this. Because I don't like him just scouting in the army. It's just kind of useless to get better percentage. And I don't really need him as a spellcaster either. Mailing is fine. I, cannot I don't think he can come out this turn, but I'm going to let him sit here and heal. He's not going to be able to move anyways. Oh, that's going to help us out. Beastman's going to fight the rebels for us. And obviously we're trying to come here to Nanli and pick that up. Now, as for buildings, I can build probably this here, clay pit. And then whatever we pick up here, we can balance with this later. That's probably the goal here. All right, this way we get a little bit of income, we get a little bit of resource to trade. That's basically all this branch does. That's not really going to cause any problems for us. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, what out? Next turn, we get that. Ivor Road is on the way. We can't dispatch another one. So I think everything's good. I don't think there's any change, even though we did get more land. That improved a little bit. Ooh. All right. It pays to check. Okay. I know it says zero, but uh, if you know me, we got to make sure. Yeah, we got to make sure. It's it's not really zero. There, there's like a little smudge in there. See, we th there was a little smudge in there. We got it. Harmony is a oh. wind shaper. All right, we're good. I think that's it. Let's continue. All right, so we got ourselves our first caravan event. It's finally on the path. Your guide knows of a route less traveled that is safer and quicker, but such precious information will not be cheap to obtain a small share of the caravan's profit will no doubt ease their tongue so basically keep our route or agree to the deal 500 i'm gonna pay 500 if it saves a turn potentially right if it's quicker and safer then 500 is nothing wait did the, did the beastman tribe over here lose oh the rebels are strong okay we want to Reoccupy Snake Gate. That's going to happen now. We get the Sword of Might, a weapon, and a thousand. And if we destroy the faction that's invaded Terracotta Graveyard, we'll pick up 3,000 plus a better sword. Uh, so these are tiered, right? This one's green. Uh, the colorless green, I think there's blue and purple, and potentially a tier above that. But uh, purple is really, really good. Uh, green's better. Druidown's going to do his thing. Harmony above all. Secure the north. And we'll colonize here. At once. And we take in this entire province. This gate is a province. Picked up the Sword of Might. And we're going to rebuild it. Straight. So if we take a look at the gate structure, it's completely different. There's no money-making buildings. There's basic military. There's advanced military. And there are... Defense buildings, so we can increase the uh, or decrease the attrition we suffer from chaos waste attrition. We can decrease the recruitment cost of all local armies in this area. So basically, we can build military buildings here and recruit some units. There are no access to Sky Junk or the Terracotta Sentinel here, which is why I plan to build them in Nungo, by the way. But there is Terracotta Sentinel here. Um, so we could probably get away with not building that chain in Nungo and just use our Bastion. Assuming we'll definitely level it up to level 4. Yeah, so this one's all about increasing rank and decreasing recruitment costs. The attrition decrease is very nice. Upkeep discount for a local army that sits here. So if we're going to sit a defensive army on top, this will help. Increase line of sight to prepare for the invasions from farther away. Giving us more supplies to build more towers. Once we are under siege, double our ammo during defensive siege. The ammo is going to be like sky high. Uh, growth and replenishment. So this is probably the best one we might want to go with early on. This is 10 growth in all provinces. Starts out local. Wow. So basically it's telling you this is actually really good game design, right? Because you like go up to tier four, finish up your building, and then you're like, I don't need this anymore, right? I don't want growth. But then it goes growth everywhere. Well, that's super good. Right. The second you get tier 5, you get access to growth everywhere. Before tier 5, you get maximum growth in local province, which is just the Bastion. Oh, I love that. 
It's pricey though, 800. Uh, it's not that bad. It, it, there's a 20% discount going on, so the base cost is like a thousand because we have the harmony, which makes everything better. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna sit here for a little while. Lord, we're gonna ignore this for the most part. All the buildings are not good. Okay, so we don't know what we want here. I didn't recruit any units, and I think that's fine because we're fighting like a very similar fight here. He is not quote unquote injured? I don't know, can't tell. Most of the units are healed back up. There's no forces here, seems to be fine. Right? Might of the storm. Question mark. It would appall yeah. my father. Safe. We just gained vision, so we paused. Well, the game doesn't think we can win this, but I think we can. It's the same fight. Um, the map should be similar. Not gonna look the same, but it's just basically a siege map. Oh, well, it's very symmetrical. Oh, it's gonna be one of those battles where this is like hallways underneath the building on the coordinate directions, and then here's like little platforms. So we want, we want to actually attack it from the diagonals. Yeah, we can do this. It's the same army. They're just thinking that, you know, we're a little bit injured here and here, but it's fine. Let's fight. Yeah, episode one's gonna be extra long episode because there's a lot of time wasted early on introducing the cinematic and the faction and a lot of little teaching points. Uh, but after this battle, after we get our first province, we'll probably end the first episode and we'll pick it up. And then future episodes gonna be around an hour in length. Okay, let me, yeah. So that's not actually a path, is it? No, that's just decoration. But we could come in here, walk below these ramps, and go for the center. This center point can't build any towers. It looks like they can only build four barricades. These little platform, however, will have towers, right? This is a tower platform, that's a tower platform. And then it looks like the barricade here, barricade here, but this is open. Wait, is this such a good way? Is this, hmm. But we see you have to clear one of these out, right? If you wanna, if you wanna come in here and then walk this way, we might get shot by archers, that's one thing. And then they can build towers and shoot us as we continue up and we have to fight uphill. So it's better if we take control of one of these corners, basically, that's what they're trying to get us to do. Right, or this this in this long way through. This might not be such a bad. It it looks kind of bad, right? Because you you feel like archers are gonna stand here and just shoot you. But is that terrible? I don't think that's terrible. We don't have to deal with towers. Like that tower, can it hit us? Right? Can this angle? Physically, can the arrow actually hit us? I don't think so. If we're safe from tower, I mean, this sounds like a bad idea. We gotta try it. Yeah, we gotta try it. What's the worst thing that can happen, right? Wait, we can deploy all the way over here? Okay, this balloon's gonna get shot down, right? We have to float it above. All the towers gonna shoot it. Um, still, still, I think this is fine. Like, we also have a summon, right? So if they put archers here, I can summon the Ancestral Warrior right behind them, just occupy them, and we go for this. And we're just gonna try to take this and win. I mean, how do they have power difference like this, and then give us a Valen defeat? Anyways, it's okay. Um, let's get, that's the range units. Order and balance. This cavalry unit is going to be completely useless here. Can we use him to distract, perhaps? Maybe, like, put him on the opposite side. Like, if they don't put unit here, I can have him flank, right? That's another option. Because he's not going to be so helpful in that hallway with all the other units cl clustered together. For the defense! The heavens await! Alright. We're about to find out. Never 
This is- I don't think this is so bad. They don't have any units on this wall. Okay, it's kind of hard to control the placement of units because of the, the elevation thing. But like, I think so far so good. We can fire just fine, we can move everyone up just fine. Is he getting attacked? They didn't put anyone this side. They put one guy. They put one guy. Okay. Can I just run by him? Imagine me just like... What's what's the unit there? Ah, oh, it's a long spearman. If it was a range unit, we could just use the range. Alright. We gotta go back and watch what's going on over here. I think we're safe. I, I don't think anything can hit us. And I think we have... Oh, it's just, the bridge is really hard to control. Oh, we're, we're hitting that little wall. And to get him to go over... These are just infantry, right? Oh, this is a crossbow unit. So there's no one coming from above. But I'm just gonna push forward a little bit more. I get a fireball, let me use it. It's targeting a unit. Uh, there we go, we fired it. Eh. I mean, it's going well, I think. Guided by ancestors. We're slowly pushing into them. It's kind of hard to get the camera work right down here, but... Because <laughs> automatically goes above and then goes down, but it's okay. It's okay. They're not firing back at us, which is good. The cavalry's, I think, in trouble. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got... Wait, wait, wait. We paused it somehow. We got through. But then we got cut off. And now we're getting killed. It's okay. This is one unit that I don't think I need to have. Like, if he, if we lose that unit, I'm fine with that. As an archers, okay, we're showering them with damage. I don't want them to run away. Animations, amazing here. Surprise! We got the high ground too. Alright, I want to just pick off this jade unit here. I don't know if this, like, hitting this fireball up is difficult. Well, that's not bad, actually. Yeah, it's just the elevation. It's it's interesting. Yeah, we lost that cavalry. I think he did his job, though. He kind of cleared the path for us. All right, I'm going to have to change and then go after the towers, because I think once we pop up here, the towers actually can shoot us. And, uh, no, he's really good at killing towers, so go for it. Alright, we killed both of those units. I'm gonna use you before you expire. I'm gonna try to move our units over here. We would like to get off this low ground. Come support them. We got him back. I'm gonna try to just suicide him again. Like, whoever we can draw, yeah, like, our attention over to us would be perfect. Right, we should be able to take down both towers pretty quick. We do a lot of damage. Yeah, the tower is killing our balloons. We kind of expected that. Oh, they're using a spell on our summon units. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Look at the, the bar. The game's like, you guys are too low, too high, too low, too high. Don't know how to take care of you. I wonder if this shot is good or not. I think I think we're not high enough. Oh, we are. We are. This is beautiful. Yeah, hit them, hit them, hit them. And the cavalry's dead again. Yep. Cavalry's dead again. It's fine. We can use the fireball while we're, while we're flying. That's neat. Alright, we're gonna take care of that first, too. Alright, we're gonna push up over here if we can. I kinda wanna drop a bomb on them. Oh, we can still distract them. We're basically occupying two units here with just a very cheap cavalry. I'm pretty happy with that. Yep, yep. Just stay with me, stay with me. Can we pound the archer? Uh, don't want all of you. Got a flank here. Okay, we're getting a little, a little bit of wind. That's fine. We should be fine. I'm gonna try to move him up. 
Okay, that archer routed. We pound them. They don't have the Inyang going. We do. I can boost our... Yeah, just find them here. It's a little bit easier. That should be quick work over here. How are we doing with the towers? There's another tower up here. That's fine. I don't think this tower is actually going to bother us. Alright, we're just going to move up over here. Looks like it's just this Jade Warrior here. You can move up. You can move up as well. Yeah, that unit's gone. Push forward. Let's see if I can throw a good fireball from the air. Alright, this should be a better angle. This barricade? Ah, the barricade. So not not such a better angle, but it's fine. All right, we got our celestial dragon guard here. We got them over here shooting. Can we get them a shot from the air? Let me go kill him. Let me give you guys a heal. Uh, I don't think we need that. I can boost myself. Oh, that that is automatically boost myself. Yep. Ah, those two units are here. Ooh, that's a good spell by them. Alright, we're gonna go bomb them. Uh, I'm fine. Let's heal all the units. Charge. Okay, just hunt down that. Destroy him. Time to drop the bomb. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Right there. And they surrendered. That was much cleaner. That pathway is not bad. I actually really like that pathway. We did sacrifice our peasant horsemen. I think I might just get rid of that unit. It's just not strong enough to do much. I mean, you can chase down routed unit. That's like it's one use, but that's too much attention in terms of micro. There's a lot of other things I want to micro. No items still. Bit unfortunate there. But we did pick up our province. The gunpowder road is back in our control. And when you hold the whole province, we gain another Jade Sculptor. Okay. I wonder if the bonuses stack. We gained an armor too. So we didn't get a post battle, but we did get a post settlement capture item haul here. We we got this and we'll pick up an enchanted shield, which is an armor, I think, and then 5,000. The storm dragon. Right, so I don't think we can double equip Jade Sculptor, but we can give Jade Sculptor to like Druga Down, for example. Lord Magistrate reporting. And if we have multiples, we can always salvage or fuse two items and get a better quality item. So there's always that option. Warden of the Great Bastion. Right. Not bad. And we pick up a skill as well. Now, I don't think we actually need to do this because that battle was the save that I was going to use. So you see, we actually picked up an in here from a spice market. Now, I love spice market, but we have to fix this. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to build out a young building here, probably the civic option. Uh, but that's things we have to consider. And there's also a tech coming up as well. So we got to be worried about that and keep an eye out for where these meters go. And we're going to try to keep that as you know neutral as possible. They are now a factionless army, I believe. They're going to suffer attrition. I might not go for them. I might just keep moving. Because you can see my brother has not taken any of these Warpstone Desert Land. And I do want them. There's a monument here and there's spices. And controlling this, this is the first step of all caravan routes. So that's going to be key as well. So I think we'll end our episode here. We'll come back next time and continue our southern push. Right now, the north seems fine. We're buying ourselves a good amount of time because we have captured the gate and with just the garrison I think we'll be able to hold the first assault by the Kurgan warband 
We'll come back and take care of the Terracotta later. Um, I think if they're able to harass my allies, that might be, like, that'd be a good thing for us. Because whatever land they take, we can take without going to war with our fellow Cathayan uh, factions. That's going to be the hope. So we'll probably just play it out this way. Uh, that's a Skaven. If we can grab Shangya, right, that's probably where we want to go first, actually. We want to work our way back. And uh, yeah, we'll come back and pick up from here. And until then, bye.